and welcome to the third video in our nomenclature series. This one covers ternary ionic compounds. So remember, ionic compounds are metal and non-metal, but if it's ternary, either the metal or the non-metal has been replaced by a polyatomic ion. So the first part is writing formulas for these ternary ionic compounds. When writing formulas for ionic compounds, we crisscross. With ternary, there's a little extra additional step. So let me read through the instructions first, and then I'll do some examples. Okay, number one, write the cations formula first, then the anions formula second. That's pretty normal. In a ternary ionic compound, one of these will be a polyatomic ion. Okay, write the charges above each ion, all right? Then step three, we're going to crisscross the ion charges to create a neutral compound. So just like binary ionic, but here's the extra part. Use parentheses around polyatomic ions when multiple ions are present. I'm going to show you that, and it's really going to help you understand what I mean by that. And then step four, reduce the subscripts if possible. So pretty similar to binary ionic, except for that underlined part where we might need to use parentheses. And you'll see what I mean. Okay, here are some examples. So our first one is magnesium sulfate. So our cation is magnesium with a plus two charge. Our anion is sulfate on the back of our periodic table with a negative two charge. So What's interesting here is we're seeing our oxidation numbers are the same. So remember my rule, if the oxidation numbers are the same, they cancel and you can just smush these together. So we have MgSO4 as our formula. Okay, that one was really easy. Let's look at the next one. We've got sodium nitrate. So sodium is plus one, nitrate is minus one. Same situation, plus one, minus one, smush together, NaNO3. Aluminum carbonate. Aluminum's oxidation number is plus three. Carbonate's oxidation number is negative two. So we are going to have to crisscross these. The three is going to become the subscript for carbonate, and the two is going to become the subscript for aluminum. So we are going to have Al2. CO3 in parentheses with the three outside. Let me show you how this works. Okay, so down at the bottom, I'm gonna model this. So we've got aluminum with a plus three charge. And then we've got carbonate with our minus two charge. So this two is gonna come and become the subscript for aluminum, super easy, but the three is gonna become the subscript for the carbonate. Here's the problem. If you don't use parentheses, you would do Al2CO33. That's really misleading. What that looks like is I've got 33 oxygens. And that is not the case. You do not have 33 oxygens. What you have is three carbonates. So we're going to protect our polyatomic ion by putting it in parentheses to show I've got three of this stuff in parentheses. I'm going to let you pause the video at this point and just try that last one all on your own and see if you can do it. When you come back, I'll have the answer for you. Okay, welcome back. We've got lead to phosphite. So lead has an oxidation number of plus two and phosphite is negative three. So we're going to have to crisscross these. They're not the same, they're not going to cancel, they have to crisscross. So lead's oxidation number of plus two is going to become phosphite's subscript, and phosphite's oxidation number becomes lead's subscript. So we end up with PB3 in parentheses, PO3, the two outside of it. Remember, you have to protect your polyatomic ion by putting it in parentheses, and then it's showing that we've got two of what's in parentheses. Okay, if you are lost, pause the video, raise your hand, ask for help, but if not, let's continue. Okay, naming ternary ionic compounds. To name a ternary ionic compound, name the metal cation, then the polyatomic anion. So metal ion names are the same as binary. You just write the element name. And then for polyatomic ion names, you look them up on the back of your periodic table and you just write them as is. So this is pretty easy. 
So Na and O3. This is sodium. This is nitrate. So guess what the name is? Sodium nitrate, BaSO3. Barium sulfite. Pretty simple. Okay. Then on the right side over here, I have one that's a little bit more difficult because we've got copper. Well, copper is multivalent, so guess what it needs? A Roman numeral. Anytime you've got a multivalent cation, you've got to put a Roman numeral in the name. Yes, it's a pain in the butt, but you've got to do it. So what is the oxidation number of copper? Well, I'm going to reverse crisscross. So I can see it's plus two. So this is copper two nitrate. Okay, pause the video, try to do the remaining three. When you come back, I'll have the answers for you. Okay, welcome back. Let's see how you did. Number three, we've got zinc. And then over here, we've got carbonate. So zinc carbonate. Okay, remember, even though zinc is in our transition metal section, we do know its oxidation number. Zinc is one that we had to memorize. Its oxidation number is always plus two, so we don't have to put the Roman numeral for that. Okay, number five, iron phosphate. Well, it's not that simple because iron is multivalent. So if we look up phosphate on the back of our periodic table, its oxidation number is minus three. So iron has to be plus three to offset this. So iron 3-phosphate is the name of number five. Okay, number six. This is ammonium and this is nitrite. Ammonium nitrite. Here's an example where we have two polyatomic ions stuck together. Just name them in order, ammonium nitrite. Okay, again, if you need help, pause the video, ask your teacher for help. If not, let's move on. Okay, next we're going into bases. So this says many substances act as bases in chemistry. We will focus on hydroxide bases and ammonia. You've got to have that one memorized. Hydroxide bases are composed of a metal cation followed by the hydroxide anion. These are always going to be ternary because of that hydroxide being a polyatomic ion. That's why I've included it in this video because the naming and the formula writing is pretty much just like ternary ionic compounds. Okay, so to write the formula for a base, you just crisscross the oxidation numbers. As we learned with ionic compounds, find the oxidation number for the cation and the hydroxide ion will always be the anion. Okay, so potassium hydroxide. Our cation is potassium with a plus one charge. Our anion is hydroxide with a negative one charge. So we've got plus one, negative one, smush them together, KOH. Calcium hydroxide. Calcium is plus two. Hydroxide's minus one, so you do have to crisscross these. CA in parentheses, OH with the two outside. Remember, OH is a polyatomic ion, so you have to protect it with parentheses. Okay, and then this last one here, titanium 4 hydroxide. Plus 4 is titanium's oxidation number. So when we crisscross, we get TI, OH in parentheses with the 4 outside. Naming bases. It's much simpler than naming acids, which we'll get to later. Name the metal, and then you're going to add the word hydroxide. Okay, NaOH. The metal sodium, this is hydroxide. So guess what its name is? Sodium hydroxide. Easy, easy, easy. MgOH2. Magnesium hydroxide. Easy. Okay, now I've got MnOH6. This one is a little bit of a pain in the booty because MN is manganese and it is a multivalent cation, which I know you love at this point. So I'm going to reverse crisscross to figure out that manganese has a plus six charge. So this manganese six hydroxide, number six is VI. You have to have those Roman numerals memorized. And lastly, you need to memorize ammonia and H3 and to know that it is a base. It is not a molecular compound, even though it's made up of two nonmetals. It is a base. NH4 plus is ammonium. Do not get that confused with ammonia, the base. Polyatomic ion, base. Okay, this concludes our video for today over ternary ionic compounds, including bases. 
move on to your practice and ask your teacher if you need any help. have a good day!